we are producing some, if not the, highest purity V205 in the world. And what's really special about that is that there is a high purity market out there. So when I put things together like low unit costs, able to sell it at a premium, I'm starting to hear shareholder value. Let's convert that from a cliche phrase which all CEOs must use into what does that mean in reality? Why will that convert into share price appreciation? Are shareholders genuinely gonna see the benefit? If you're watching this video, you're probably interested in the vanadium space and understanding how you can make money in it. Today, we talked to Mark Smith, the CEO of Largo Resources, and he helps us understand the space just a little bit more. We discussed with him his strategy and how he's going to implement that over the next 12 months. We discussed remuneration and how they look at it. It's quite an interesting response from him. They've increased their capacity recently. We discuss how they've gone about doing that and why. Plus, we look at the niche markets that are gonna target after their Glencore contract ends next April, I think it is. If you wanna look at those topics, look in the description below, click on the relevant timestamp and that'll take you to that part of the video. And if I can ask that you click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel or click the notification bell to receive updates and see videos like this one. So let's see what Mark had to say. Good morning, Mark. How are you, sir? Oh, very well. Thank you very much for having us. Well, it's, it's great to have a company of your stature on our humble channel. So uh, thank you for your time. Um, so we've been wanting to get Largo on because we've, we've spoken with uh, Bushveld and a couple of other smaller players uh, and trying to understand the market and kind of share that with our um, subscribers and followers. So can you give us a one minute summary on the business and then we'll kind of get stuck into some questions? Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, very, very proud to talk about this company and we've worked hard to get it where it is today. But we start out with a, an absolute world class resource. We have the highest ore grade, the highest concentrate, concentrate grade in the world, hands down. We couple that with outstanding metallurgy, which gives us very, very low unit costs of production. And of course, none of that happens unless you have the right people involved. And I, I actually think that even with a world-class resource and low unit costs, our strength is our people. That's what makes things happen in this company. And we've worked hard to get where we are. We are a significant player in the vanadium market now in the world. Vanadium growth is, is outstanding right now. The demand is uh, growing uh, year by year. And uh, we want to be there as a significant, reliable, low-cost supplier to feed our customers. Fantastic. Thanks for that summary. And we'll, we'll get stuck into some of the market and financial yeah. stuff in a minute. But I'm really interested in understanding your thinking when you started off, your strategy. You talk about people, which is very refreshing. Um, Tell me what you set out to do. What did you start with and to, and what did you need to do to get it where it is today? What, what, what were those hurdles? Well, I'll go back a little bit farther uh, than, than when I joined the company, but what the company started out doing was they, they, they saw some geological information, uh, publicly available geological information. Our geologists got pretty excited about that um, for vanadium purposes, whereas Almost everybody else was looking at this resource as more of a, a potential iron ore resource. Our, our geologists saw something slightly different. And so we started to run more and more drilling programs, testing for that vanadium potential. Um, once that vanadium potential was proven out in terms of potential uh, head grades coming into a mill, uh, they started to run some metallurgical work on it. So it's just kind of the advancement of, of the normal PEA pre-fees and feasibility study process. We put all that information together and the excitement didn't stop. Um, all of a sudden we realized we had something uh, very, very high potential here. So the, the next step was to get the financing in order so that we could put a project on the ground. This was a Greenfields project. Uh, so we, we got the money together and in about a two year period, on budget, I might add, our people built a plant that could take the ore out of the ground, run it through the entire uh, vanadium processing uh, unit and end up with a sellable B205 product. Uh, the next step was to, to then, once we built it, we had to actually operate it. We had to ramp up that production. And that's when I came in. Uh, the prior CEO was a very, very good 
uh, promoter who, who really got the investment world excited about this project. He was able to raise the money to build the project, built the project. Uh, Largo then brought me in uh, to, to really get this facility ramped up. They were having uh, some troubles getting it to, to operate at its full design capacity. So we've now been able to achieve uh, far better than its design capacity, I might add, or five to 10% above its design capacity. And then just recently, uh, we went through a, an expansion program where we took that design capacity and for very, very low CapEx, uh, less than $20 million US, we've been able to increase our production levels by 25%. So we're now in the neighborhood of about a thousand tons per month at a production level on a V205 basis. Right, um, so, but let, let, let's, let's, let's leave the where we're at today a bit for a second. Come back to this this thinking in terms of what you're, what you're trying to build here. So you're, you're one of, um, I think you position as one of three large scale primary Vanadium producers in the world. Um, to get there, a lot of things need to fall into place. Uh, I should say you, the, 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 the asset has got to be good. You've got to have the right people on board. You know, you've got a geologist who spotted something that others didn't, and then you you focused on vanadium rather than iron ore. But and, and then you've come on board and you've been focused on um, pr production and in, improving and increasing production. But what are you trying to build here? You're you're at seven hundred thirty million dollar market cap, which is which is you know great. Um, and we'll talk about share price and market etc. in a second. But what is it you're trying to build? Well, and, and unfortunately, it takes a little while to get to that to that exact point. So bear with me for just a moment. As part of putting the financing together to build that facility, we entered into a contract, a 100% offtake contract with Glencore. Yeah. It was a very, very well-known mining and trading business in, in the yeah. world. So 100% of our production has been sold to Glencore for about five years and, and three months now. We've got actually yeah. less than nine months left on that contract. Yeah. Um, so what's important about that is that we were a little bit limited in what we could do strategically because we had that contract in place with one okay. offtake partner. Now we have eight and a half months left. And if I sound just a little bit excited about what's in, in the future for this company, right. then I'm doing the right thing. Well, that, that, that helps they, me because what, 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 one of my questions was, what's life after Glencore going to look like? And, and I, I think I can tell from your body language what it's going to look like. It, it, it's, you know, it, don't get me wrong. Glencore provided us the contract that we absolutely had to have to get financing in place. They were right for so the time. Perfect. Yeah. And they've been, yeah. they've been wonderful. They've made every single one of their payments for the product on time. So mm. no, no problems at all with Glencore. But we think we can take our product and market it very differently in, in the world of, of vanadium. Tell me about and that the reason thought. Why, Tell me about that thought. Yeah, this is the, where I want to go, you know, because not only do we have a world-class resource, fantastic metallurgy, low unit cost production, we are producing some, if not the, highest purity V205 in the world. And what's really special about that is that there is a high purity market out there. Mm. And that high purity market is in excess of probably nine to 10,000 tons on a V basis. So upwards of 20 to 25,000 tons on a V205 basis. There are aerospace industries or chemical industries and there are vanadium redox batteries that absolutely have to have high purity material and they're willing to pay a premium for that material. Nice. So when I put things together like low unit costs and, and not any extra money to, to produce a high purity material, but able to sell it at a premium compared to what other Vanadium producers can sell, I'm starting to hear shareholder value. And that's what, that's what makes us tick. So let, let's, let's, let's convert that from a cliched phrase, which all CEOs must use, into what does that mean in reality? Okay, so you were saying you can take your very high grade vanadium, sell it into a niche section of the marketplace, get a premium for that, which obviously right. is great for the bottom line. But you think, why will that convert into share price appreciation? Won't, won't it just be sucked up and used, used in the company, the cash be sucked up and used elsewhere in the company? Are shareholders genuinely going to see the benefit? 
yeah, they, they will absolutely see the benefit. And, and when you compare that strategy, that sales strategy with what we have today, a very simple sales strategy, one customer, yeah. one offtake, and, and they tell us what the price is based on formulas. And it's, it's actually maybe a little bit boring compared to what this company deserves because of its high purity and the reputation for high purity that we have, we have been able to obtain. Are we talking dividends? We are very interested in managing our money very, very conservatively because of the volatility of Canadian prices. But we have a very good cash uh, reserve on hand right now. And as we build up this strategy, this sales strategy, we believe, and we've been on public record with this, we believe that we could potentially increase the bottom line by $100 million as a result of this new sales strategy. We get into that type of, of extra cushion on the bottom line. We're gonna be all about returning money to the shareholders in either the form of a dividend or share buyback. That's where it gets very interesting for, um, yes. especially in the vanadium space where, let's face it, companies and shareholders have taken a hammering. It's been, I mean, a hell of a ride, right? <laughs> Yeah, the, you know, it, it, it went shooting up uh, to what, what, was, what did it get up to at the, at the height? The height for European V205 pricing got up to about $24, $25 a pound. Right. Okay. And then it's back down today to? It's about $8 a pound today. Right. Okay. So and where, where do you think is realistic in this? Obviously, because there's a lot of factors in the market well well discussed chinese rebar standards etc and um people resetting their expectations based on the enforcement or not by the chinese government on those standards right and there's all those variables right and the, i guess first of all let me say that if you just take a look at like a 30-year average price for vanadium mm. probably in the seven seven fifty a pound range but all those variables that you're talking about i think are going to permanently change the vanadium market in terms of, of a price point that's comfortable for the market. What makes you think that? Yeah. Well, I think we've got the additional demand coming in from the China rebar standard. You've got the, the very in, inelastic potential for Chinese production, at least coming from the steel mills. They, you know, they take the co-product off the steel production, they send that to their vanadium subsidiary and they make vanadium. No steel company in China, I don't care if the price is $25 a pound, no steel company in China is going to produce more steel solely to produce more vanadium. So it's very inelastic. And, and in this high demand, low supply area that we are right now, you're not seeing you know, huge increases in production from the, uh, from the Chinese steel mills. Where China could come on strong and have in the past is from the, the, the stone coal operations, which are really more of a primary mining operation. Right. But what we're seeing there is a real change in China as well. And I've, I've been in the business now for 38 years. And so I'm just like everyone else in terms of thinking, well, is China ever really going to change on the environmental front? Because everybody's always saying, well, they're going to enforce those environmental regulations. So therefore, you won't see this extra production coming on. China has lived up to that for over a year and a half now. They have not issued stone coal mining permits. They don't have operating permits to run those facilities because unless they meet the environmental standards, China is not giving them those licenses to operate. So we are not seeing any significant impact from stone coal operations in China in terms of additional supply. So you take supply kind of where it was, demand has already boosted up as a result of, of normal vanadium market growth, but then it, it's really gone up because of the rebar standard in China, we, we continue to have a very big deficit in terms of supply out there. Uh, stone coal isn't filling the hole. And if you try to go with any greenfield or, or you know, brownfield operations for primary mines, those take you know, three to five years before you can really get them up to a production level that, that, that really makes a difference. So we've got a period of time where I think you're gonna continue to see that supply deficit, and as a result, I'm anticipating prices to be more in the twelve to fifteen dollar a pound range. So, where, where are you getting this data from? What, what gives you that certainty that the Chinese will enforce 
and regulate? We get, we get data from a variety of sources to make sure that we're not swayed um, on, 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 you know, in the wrong way by one party. Mm. So we have uh, all the normal subscription services to the industry news. Uh, we, we, in addition, are, are full members, and, and I'm actually a member of the board of directors of Banatech, which is the Vanadium Producers Association. We compile statistics on production, on, on demand, uh, look at, at growth opportunities and whatnot, so we have access to that. And then we also uh, use another very, very reputable consultant to kind of help tie all this together and offer his opinions. Uh, his name is Terry Perlis. We've used him on two earnings calls now to, to explain to our shareholders during an earnings call what the Vanadium market looks like. Uh, Terry has over 30 years of experience in the, in the arena, is probably one of the best known Vanadium people in the world. He doesn't just use the internet to do his research. He actually goes to China three, four, five times a year. He does his research with feet on the ground. I really, really like that kind of research. That's hard data. Okay. Okay. So you, you feel comf- confident and comfortable with that. Um, if I may come back to Glencore, obviously that relationship is going to terminate. They were right. They were fit for purpose. Uh, but now you see, you know, the future a different way. Um, what's or who has the experience of selling into the market? Do you understand the process of selling into market, especially when you're talking about uh, niche markets? Yes, um, a couple of couple of points there. One is I've been doing this for a long, long time, 38 years and counting, uh, still enjoying every day, I might add. Uh, Terry Perlis is, is an absolute wonderful facilitator in terms of meeting these people, providing that bridge so that we can talk to them. Um, I've been going to all of the, the normal vanadium and alloy type conferences for over three years now meeting with all of the people that we thought would be customers uh, nine months from now. Mm-hmm. So we've been developing these relationships for over three years to make sure they knew who we were, what we produce, how we produce it, uh, what our capabilities are, and what our reliability is. And so we've really developed good relationships on that, on that basis. Then in May of this year, we announced the hiring of a new director of, uh, of sales and trading, Paul Vallant. Paul uh, comes to us from TNG, which is a will be a Greenfields vanadium and titanium project. Paul has significant experience, knows Terry Perlis very well uh, as well, I might add. Paul has significant experience, particularly in the master alloy business where you take aluminum and uh, alloy it with vanadium, ultimately alloy it with titanium and you sell that to the jet engine manufacturers. That's the aerospace alloy side of this business that that we are very interested Mm -hmm. in penetrating quickly. Paul is very experienced, very well known in those areas. So we get a jump start right away. Okay, so those conversations have started, I imagine. Yes. People understand what they're working with when the end date with the Glencore relationship is. Um, and before we get into your projects, and I do want to get into your projects because you used some great words in the presentation, I just want to make say you're one of the very few companies in, in the vanadium space which isn't trying to push me the vanadium redox flow battery story. Why is that? Uh, <laughs> Why well, is that? To the extent that, that that is the impression I left that I apologize. First of all, let me be very clear that Largo really likes that industry, right. we want to support that industry. We see it as an unbelievable demand growth factor if, if we could get it off the ground. The problem we have right now is that um, the, the battery industry really needs very low priced vanadium, and that's not my business. My business is high purity, high premium, type products that, that I want to sell into a market that has to have those those uh, high right. purity products. So your focus is on attain, uh, attaining price and margin. Yes. It, it doesn't matter to you where from. If, if the battery guys get their act together and it works at a price that suits, that's where you'll sell it? Exactly. We'll be right there. Okay. And we have been working with probably over nine different battery companies just to get you a sense of of our level of support and our level of interest in this. Uh, Every one of them has tested our material. 
and, and Armaterio works in every single one of their batteries. Right. A lot of the other Vanadium manufacturers cannot say that. Right. So we're very proud of that right now. That's really also interesting. Not here to subsidize that industry. Well, that's really interesting. And I think our viewers should pay attention to that point because you're the only company in this space which has made that point. It's you've got to focus on the margins, not necessarily the market. And a lot of com a lot of your competitors are spending a lot of time and effort and money trying to work out how they enter that space. And I've wondered why at this early stage would they spend their time and money to do that. But I guess we'll step back and, and, and see what happens. We, we will. And, you know, I think the, the really interesting part to Largo right now is the creative thinking that's starting to go into the Vanadium Redox Flow battery and all of its costs. Because, you know, really until about a year, year and a half ago, the battery manufacturing companies weren't focused on the manufacturing costs of putting that battery together. They were almost solely focused on the price of vanadium. Mm. They've figured out now that not only do they need you know lower priced vanadium to make this work, they need to figure out how to put that battery together more efficiently. Yeah. And if we couple those things together, we are going to have an extremely competitive product for grid level energy storage. And, and we are very excited about it. But, you know, I, I'm going to sell my, my vanadium to the uh, highest premium market I can find. That's fantastic. I think, again, something for, pe for, for our uh, subscribers and followers and investors to note, you know, early stage projects cost money. And that's where the costs come in. You're saying we'll let people do that. Sounds very exciting. And if the price is right, we will eventually step in there. But for now, we're focused on the money. Lovely. Okay, shall we talk about your company? Sure. <laughs> That's why we're here. Um, you mentioned in your uh, presentation, there's, there's two things I really want to focus on. One is the uh, your ability to in, increase the production capacity, and that's with your, you call it a growth project. That's the headline, and I like that. It's a growth project. And the second is around exploration. So let's start about how you're going to increase the production capacity. Yeah, we, we are almost completed with that expansion uh, project. And it was realistically, from an engineering standpoint, it was really more of a de-bottlenecking project than anything else. Uh, the whole plant already had the capacity to produce at a higher level, but there were three sections of the plant that didn't have that extra capacity associated with it. So all, all that we did was to uh, upgrade those three sections of the plant so that they mm -hmm. can now get more product through. And we are, you know, in, in July, we've already uh, published this as well. In July, we actually hit a production rate of 1,042 tons for the month. Mm -hmm. Well, the design rate for the expansion project, which wasn't even completed in July, is 1,000 tons per month. So that goes to the people side. I mean, our, our people are so passionate about what they're doing and why they're doing it. They love the fact that they're producing a product that's actually making the world a safer place. You know, it's 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 that deep purpose that they have when they go to work every day that I just I'm amazed at, and I, I smile when I go out to the site. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, so you're going to be up to what 12,000 12, tons a year. That's significant. What's that going to do for your numbers? Um, well, it depends on price, right? I mean. The, the price of, of vanadium is what drives our our earnings and cash flow almost more than anything because we are you know one of if not the lowest cost yeah. producers in the world. So, yeah. you know our, our operating costs today are about three dollars and sixty five cents a pound. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time we we just throw everything in the company on top of that, we're probably kind of in the the four maybe four twenty five a pound okay. uh, range for absolutely everything mm -hmm. in on an on a all cash basis mm -hmm. so you you can you can just measure what that does for uh based on price and then by increasing your production by 25 percent, you're going to get that many more pounds through the system at that margin right. so it, it absolutely will increase top line will absolutely increase bottom line and the other little piece here that a lot of people maybe aren't, aren't as as aware of as, as what we are this is one of the primary reasons why we did the project is by increasing our production volume through the entire facility, mm -hmm. we will lower our unit costs. Yeah. So we'll get 25% more production where we get more revenue, 
but we're also going to lower the unit cost of production over the entire 12,000 pounds or 12,000 tons of production per year. That, that makes a difference too. And we like to work on both sides of that, you know, right. increase the, 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 the uh, revenue side. But let's continue to work on that cost side as well. I like that you're shaving at both ends of the, of the cost spectrum. Brilliant. And then you've talked about it's a nine year life of mine. You, you're talking about it being able to extend that potentially by another 12 years with the, the satellite program. So t- why don't you tell us about the exploration and drilling program? Yeah, let, let me start out at a, at a little higher level because I, I think that the way that, that uh, NI 43101 standards, which we have to comply with uh, in Canada for uh, resource work, the way those standards work, um, they oftentimes don't tell the whole the whole story. So everything that you just said is absolutely correct. About a nine-year reserve life at the Campbell Pit. Uh, we think we've probably got another 12 years of, of uh, reserve life uh, out at our or resource life out at our uh, satellite uh, pit called NAN, because uh, NAN is a lot easier to say for people than Novo, Novo Emporo Norte. Uh, it's a Portuguese uh, name. It's hard hard to say, so we just call it NAN. Uh, and, and that's wonderful that we have those two areas that, that we are very confident about for the future. Mm. But to put it into context, you know, we have 40 kilometers mm. of a known magnetic structure sitting out there in the ground. In that 40 kilometers that, that we have known magnetic uh, you know, fields in that, in that resource, the, the Maricos uh, mentioned mine, the, the Campbell pit that we have, uh, when it's fully mined out in, in nine years, uh, it will take up about one and a half kilometers of that 40 kilometer stretch of magnetic material. So this is a matter of how much money we want to spend on drilling and how fast to show how big this resource is. Hmm. I'm, I'm not a huge believer in, in showing that we have all 40 kilometers all at once. What I'm a big believer in is making sure that our uh, shareholders and the analysts that work with us have a, a 25 to 30 year mine life. Yeah. Because when you start modeling those out on an NPV basis, you get out to 25 and 30 years that the NPV you know, accretion really starts to go down. So we will we will just kind of maintain a 25 to 30 year mine life resource potential. Mm. And then as we deplete those resources, we will add those resources. But it's my, my opinion that we are going to be here for a very, very long time, uh, decades and potentially centuries. So a lot of, a lot of moving parts there. Um, working in Brazil, you're obviously enjoying it. It's You're not finding it problematic. Are there any None issues? All. all smooth sailing. None, none whatsoever. Uh, we have a we're we're located in the state of Bahia, yeah. uh, which is a it's very well known for mining, uh, and and the people there support mining in a big way. Uh, we have to treat them right too, and we take great pride in, in that sustainability and, and that, that social uh, aspect of our business. Uh, mm-hmm. We take that seriously. We just published our first ESG report. Yeah. Uh, very proud of that. So we, we take that all very seriously, but the support that we get from, from the local government and the state government and the federal government has been phenomenal. I, I have not one complaint about how we're being treated in Brazil. It's really come together quite well. And I might also add that um, we, we have basically a 100% Brazilian workforce at our site. Uh, when we started our operation, we had a combination of Canadians, U.S., South Africa, and, and Brazil. And we found that those cultures didn't really come together as well as we wanted them to come together. Mm. We made a very hard decision. And we decided to to go with basically a 100% Brazilian workforce. And it was almost precisely at the time that that decision was made and executed that the production level started to ramp up and get to the full design rate. So okay, very proud of our workforce, and yeah. very good training programs we put into place. Good, good on you. I, um, I, I, I admire that. Um, you made a lot of money last year. We did. What are you doing with it? Well, you know, we, we spent some of that money on uh, this expansion project. The other thing that we did that, that I've got to say, um, the entire company is, is just, I, I can't even express how proud we are of our capabilities to do it, but we are 100% debt free. We went from a $300 million debt company to zero. 
Um, and we are exceptionally proud of that. No one thought it was possible. We did, and we made it happen. So why didn't the market reward you for that? That's a good question. Um, I think that it, it, at the time that we brought the debt down to zero was when the price of vanadium was starting to come down uh, very strongly as well. And it's, it's come down you know, 70% since its peak in, uh, in November of 2018. And if you if you follow our share price, it's 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 quite amazing, the uh, the absolute mirror that you can you can create with our share price versus vanadium price, and and I'm not sure that 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 that's necessarily a, a good or a bad thing. Uh, we are definitely tied to vanadium, and so as that price goes up and down, we're going to make more or, or less, but we do have a lot of additional potential in this company, that that I don't think the market is fully understanding just yet well you we you're, have you're, you're telling me you're telling me a lot today about what the additional piece because one of my questions is you know what's the plan here going forward because it can't all be about the vanadium price if it is you, you, you don't have to work so hard right you need to, you, so people need to get focused on the things which you're doing like the the niche uh vanadium markets the drill program, the et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it's, give, give me your top it's five things. Back. Tell me, well, tell right. me your top five well, things. Me, yeah, our, our probably the most transformational thing that's going to happen in this company is when we undertake the sales ourselves, because yeah. we are going to go after those high purity niche markets. They're growing at, at three to four times the rate that the rest of the vanadium market is growing. Uh, the, the backlog for uh, jet engine orders it, you know, goes out for 30 years and it goes way beyond any time that we could see. So that is just a fantastic market to be in. It commands a premium and we can we meet all the specs and we're qualified to sell into all four companies that make it. Because you're the highest purity? Because others will be doing the same thing, of, right? Not the highest purity producer in the world. That's correct. Because niche also means small. And we've taken the time to become qualified suppliers to the four companies that make the master alloy. Right. That's a year, year and a half process by itself. Absolutely. But I'm saying niche also means small. So if someone gets in before you, that, that's gone. So you need to really get focused here, don't you? Um, you know, I think that when we take a look at that market, um, we see nothing but upside for Largo as a result of it. That, that market, just the aerospace industry alone, is about 4,500 tons on a V basis which is going to be basically a full year's production, a little, little less of full year's production for, for Largo on a V205 basis. Hmm. We, we, you know, at, at 12,000, uh, we'll be producing, you know, roughly 6,000 tons on a V basis. So um, we would like to supply as much of that aerospace market as possible. Then the next uh, category of, of specialty niche markets we want to follow is the chemical market. And this is where you know, vanadium has an unbelievable capability of changing its valence state. So it can go from a plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five valence state and back and forth quite readily. That means that it makes an ec excellent active ingredient on catalysts. And so it is used as, a, as, a, as an active ingredient in multiple catalysts throughout the world, hmm. hundreds of catalysts. But just the, the uh, sulfuric acid production plant catalysts that are produced by the likes of Albemarle and Grace and, and Dow DuPont, names that I like to, to put out there because they're very, very low credit risk. Um, those are the types of people that are making a sulfuric acid catalyst. They also have to have high purity vanadium. They need that in, in powder form. Mm. We make flake and we make powder. So we will be uh, going after those customers as well. That also commands a premium. That's about 3,500 tons of additional uh, demand in the market per year on a V basis. And then the battery industry is taking 1,000 to 2,000 tons of uh, product on a, on a V basis a year too. You're now over 10,000 tons per year with the, the vanadium redox battery side potentially growing in an enormous way. Largo wants to take its, its high purity material and it wants to serve those niche markets, which are way larger than what our production is. We think we can fit in there very nicely. Uh, and again, reliability of production, low unit costs, uh, consistency is, is what it's all about. And we're demonstrating that to those customers. 
uh, even as we speak right now. So that that's the number one uh, transformational item that we want to pursue. The, the second one is, as we've talked about already, the resource potential of, of, of this site is unbelievable. And to the extent that we've got a supply and demand deficit out there that looks like it can't be handled by any other means, and if we can provide an economic solution to that and continue with reliable, low-cost production, we can expand our production capabilities. We could easily double our production capabilities out on site. We're putting together engineering studies to support that right now so we understand what the costs are, what the time for implementation is, uh, what the impacts to the market might be if we double that expansion. But we have that capability with this resource out there. Then, you know, it, it doesn't stop there. That's the beauty of Largo and why, why we get so happy and, and smiling about this all the time. Within that ore body that we're currently mining, we have titanium. Titanium is, is a very uh, liquid uh, product as well. It would come right out of the existing ore that we're already mining. And we've developed one uh, recovery process already that we've uh, built a pilot plant and we're gonna be starting that pilot plant up probably literally any day right now. We hope to have that converted into a full titanium production project within maybe 12 to 15 months. That's a new product that, that you know, diversifies the risk a little bit and, uh, and gets us into new markets uh, that, that we think are pretty exciting. Okay. I mean, well, yeah, t t titanium, again, has been a little bit volatile and in and out of favor as well. And I guess you'll work out whether you can do it economically. And, and if you can, you'll do it. Economics, by the way, look very good. And right. there are some titanium producers, uh, customers, right in Brazil, who have resources that are, are being depleted and, and probably have less than a year life on them. So we think the timing of our ability to produce titanium with that company's uh, resource problem is going to come together very nicely. Okay, so I want to talk about a couple more things. So what do you th you think all of those things on their own? Because I said, you know, if you're relying on the vanadium price, I think it's, it's going to be a tough ride. Um, you think that those moving parts that you're looking at should start being recognized by the market and should therefore be reflected in some sort of shareholder value creation, yeah. some accretive value creation. Um, and I guess we will wait and see, but it, it, does, it does, sound, does sound very interesting to me. Um, I want to talk about remuneration, because again, you've done something unusual here. You're, I, I'm always fascinated by the remuneration of the board and management for juniors, you know, as they, as they grow. And you've done something I haven't seen before. You, your salary has been reducing and you're, you're incentivizing yourself based on success, yes. which is great. That's fantastic. Yeah. I, think it's the, I think it's the best way to deal with these issues. Yeah. As, as the company does better, so do I. Yeah. That, that creates complete alignment between our shareholders and me personally. Yeah. And I try to take that down into the organization as deeply as I can. Yeah, no, I just thought I'd point it out because usually when I talk to people about remuneration, the CEO's eyes just get a little bit teary uh, because they don't, it's something they don't want to talk about because usually the pro, their market oh, cap's going... About everything we do in a public company is public, so well, no problem. It is, but no one wants to talk about it. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> no, so, so, you know, I, I, so I'll take my hat off to you on that one. Um, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so what would you say is keeping you awake at night going forward? You know, it, it, I was asked this question um, about six months ago mm -hmm. when we were making over a million dollars a day in free cash flow. Mm -hmm. um, and and my, my, the thing that keeps me awake at night more than anything else is the same thing today that, that it did six months ago, even though prices are down now. Mm -hmm. Success often often breeds mediocrity. It gets people relaxed, and the discipline and, and everything that you fought so hard for goes away very easily. All of a sudden, money's available, and you know, let's try this, let's try that. 
Um, we have worked very hard internally. We have management meetings consistently and, and regularly to keep the alignment and the discipline going on. We have to be a low cost producer. I do not want those costs of production coming up at all just because we're making money now. We need to continue to, to go after that lowest unit cost of production. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're not going to find a dollar per pound that we can take off that unit cost of production mm -hmm. anymore. But we can find nickels, we can yeah. find dimes, we can find a few pennies. Those all add up. But keeping that keeping that discipline is what keeps me awake at night. Beautiful, beautiful. Mark, thank you very much for your time. That's a lovely introduction to your company. We, you know, like thank I say, you. We, you. we're trying to learn about the vanadium space. It's been a volatile space for, for many. And I think a lot of shareholders, investors are a little bit nervous about what's going on. They're not sure what the future looks like. I think you've explained a vision for Largo and a strategy of how you're going to get there. And that's what interests me and should inter interest all of our subscribers. So thank you very much. Wonderful. My pleasure. And one last parting comment is the price of vanadium is actually going up the last two weeks in a row. So um, <laughs> things are, are turning around in that regard as well. So. <laughs> two weeks. I'll check in with you in a two weeks time as well. OK, brilliant. Thanks okay. again, Mark. We'll speak to you real soon. Thank you. All right. Great. My pleasure. Thanks very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed that. And, and if you did, please click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also catch us on our website, cruxinvestor.com and Cruxcast, our podcast series. Plus most days you can catch us on LinkedIn and Twitter. We'd love getting your feedback, so please keep that coming and we'll speak to you again soon.